Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about introduction to BigQuery. So BigQuery, so it's a Google Cloud service. So it's one of the Google Cloud service which comes under data. So uh, if you if you take a Google Compute Cloud, right? That is GCP. Google Cloud provides various services. So services for mobile computing, services for web computing, services for machine learning, artificial intelligence, A AR, virtual reality, and so many things, right? So li like that, BigQuery comes under which category of service? Which comes under data service? So BigQuery is a data service. That is point number one. Now, what actually the BigQuery is? So BigQuery is a highly scalable serverless data warehouse component. So it means it's a data processing component where you can process your data, you can transform your data, you can write all kind of complex SQL join queries uh, in, in, in BigQuery and you can generate the reports. So all ETL transformations you can able to do with respect to BigQuery. So it's a data warehouse component. And what about the terminology which I said just before? Highly scalable serverless. So what is serverless. So serverless is a quite popular terminology all the cloud sellers are using. Like Amazon also started saying we provide many services as serverless. So Google also says the same thing. Microsoft Azure says the same thing, right? So what is that serverless? See, generally imagine you have a technology, you consider any MySQL or Oracle or Big Data, Hadoop, Spark, any technology, you, will, you need to have a cluster, right? So group of machine forms a cluster. Now imagine you take this diagram, so I have like one, two, three, four nodes. So here this node is a server node and all these nodes are client node, right? So I have a client node which gets the request and forward it to the server and get the response and then process the response in the client node and give you the result. Right. So now when the, when more request comes to your cluster, right, so the more load the server will take. Right. So that means the infrastructure is you have to take the responsibility of managing and maintaining the infrastructure. So you have to check whether the load is coming a lot. Then you have to increase the RAM. You have to increase the hard disk. You have to increase the bandwidth of the network. So everything you have to take care. So when we call it as a serverless, that means you don't want to anything. You don't want to worry about anything with respect to server. So you just worry about writing your code, executing that in BigQuery. So the, the complete infrastructure related problems, we will be taking care of it like that Google says. So Google saying that I will take care of all your infrastructure problems. You just concentrate on your code. That's it. So this is what a serverless architecture is. So for you as a developer, as a customer for Google Cloud, you are the customer and for, as, a, for a, as a customer for you, it is serverless, but for Google, it is not serverless. Okay, so this we have to understand. So many people used to get confused like uh, what exactly the serverless and that means like physically there is no, no nothing like server that's going to be there in physical no it's not like that there is a physical server but it has been completely maintained by google so what google says i will take care of all the problems infrastructure issues i will take care of it so i will scale it when i when he says scale when google say i will take care of scaling it that means when there more load or request comes to your application google takes the responsibility to increase the ram hard disk network bandwidth and so on so only for those you have to pay that's it and once your load get reduced and automatically the RAM hard disk will be get freed and then you will not be get charged or billed for that particular resource what you are not using. So serverless is for the customer but for Google it is still a server related services only. It's the same apl applicable for AWS, Microsoft Azure or whatever other cloud sellers who were say serverless components, right? So serverless it's all about you don't want to worry about the infrastructure. So here BigQuery is also the same. So BigQuery, it's not, not like you create a cluster, you maintain, you say how many node of uh, a machine you need in a cluster, 10 node machine, 20 node machine, 100 node. No, you don't want to worry about it. Based upon the volume of your data, based upon the query uh, processing uh, uh, query volume, the data volume and the query uh, volume. So automatically the scaling will happen and the infrastructure scaling will be taken care by the Google. So that is what a serverless is all about. Okay, next, how can I compare this BigQuery? Imagine if you are a big data developer or Hadoop developer, you know Hive, right? So Hive is a data warehouse component. So I can compare BigQuery with Hive. So how Hive, it's in Hadoop. Similarly, we use BigQuery in 
GCP. So Hive is not serverless, but BigQuery is serverless. And if you are coming from AWS or you are aware of AWS something, uh, Amazon Web Services and another cloud server similar to BigQuery. In AWS, we have something called Redshift. So BigQuery it's again an alternate of Redshift. So, so BigQuery and Redshift are equally uh, uh, competitors in the market. So in the later upcoming videos, let, let's discuss more about when to use Redshift or why not BigQuery and all in the use case sessions. Let's discuss in the upcoming videos. And, and what language I have to use in BigQuery and what kind of uh, uh, query platform it gives you. It, it, in, it internally has a query engine and that query engine supports SQL, SQL, Structure Query Language. So people come from database background or data warehouse background, it will be very easy for you to enter into BigQuery, but by just knowing the basic SQL thing. And uh, with respect to the uh, uh, performance, it is always highly perform performance uh, achievable because infrastructure is completely taken care by the BigQuery itself. And the, we have, we use a terminology called scale out. The scale out is all about the limit of your performance is based on the infrastructure, not based on the BigQuery. That is the point we used to say, scale out. So that means BigQuery itself, it's a wonderful uh, engine it has internally to process your query. I'll tell you the engine name and how it works and all in the upcoming videos. So here, whenever there is a more volume of data comes, please, uh, you have to scale scale the hardware the infrastructure the data center and the uh, hardware thing you have to enhance means that means like bigquery will take care of that load balancing automatically so the limit is based on the infrastructure only not or because of your BigQuery. So that is what we call it as a scale out. So BigQuery supports the scale out functionality. And then BigQuery is available in all the regions. So when I say regions, if you are having cloud background, you 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 should understand it, right? But for others, I'll tell you. So all these cloud sellers, they will be deploying their physical data centers so like, uh, like uh, North America, uh, like Canada, uh, Asia Pacific, in Asia Pacific, like Singapore, in India, like that, they will be having their physical data centers through which they will be uh, forwarding your request and res uh, response. So here uh, we call all these data centers as a regions. So if you take in India, we have a regions, and if you take in, in Singapore, we have a Google Cloud region. In North America, we have, and so in 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 Canada, we have. So in Australia, we have. So wherever the regions, the data centers available in all the regions, you can able to uh, run BigQuery because why I'm saying this, right? Few services are limited to the regions. It's there, it's same like in AWS and GCP, we have this problem for few services for some uh, reason few services will not be uh, working in few regions. For example, imagine there is a service called ABC that will not work in India, Indian region. That means you cannot create, it's not like that. So which means like you have to create that particular ABC service from different region. Imagine I am a, I have a startup in India. Okay, I'm a food delivery app. I have a food delivery app. So I deployed my complete application uh, and my complete uh, system in Google Cloud and my users are only from India. Okay. So that means when I deploy all these services to nearby region means the performance will be really good. So if for example, imagine for India, Singapore is the nearest place region. Imagine in Google Cloud is providing a nearest uh, region for India is Singapore. So in that case, I will be using Singapore region so that my performance will be good and my request response will be very faster. So imagine if Singapore region doesn't allow a particular service for me, who is a owner of an Indian product, right? So that means it is not like you cannot use. I can use the pro service, but for, I have to deploy it in a different region. That's it. Okay, so that... so. So there will be a very uh, a minimum, minimal uh, latency will be there. That's it. It's, it's not a very big drawback and all, but it is like in, for few services only, but BigQuery is like available in all the regions. Okay, let's get into advantages and futures. Fine. So let me open a slide. Okay, so we have advantages. So uh, with respect to advantages, right, uh, BigQuery supports both batch and streaming data ingestion. So you can ingest a table or a file, which is a batch data. When I say streaming data means real time events. For example, there is a website where people are doing the transaction. So transaction means it's a real time events, right? You can capture it and then you can store it. So the minimum level of capacity is 100,000 rows per second for streaming and more than a TB of data, batch data per second. For batch data, more than TB per second. For stream data, more than 100,000 rows per second can be ingested to your BigQuery. 
and it also supports ai and ml artificial intelligent and machine learning libraries are available and you can even process those data as via uh, BigQuery, it supports AML. And then fully managed service, yeah, we already talk about the serverless and highly scalable, yes. And then pay as you go. So when I say pay as you go, it's all cloud services are like rented service, right? So you use and you pay, for example, I'm using BigQuery for the next two hours. Only for the next two hours, you'll be paying it. And then the remaining the day you are not using it means you are not charged or you are not going to be pay money for it. Right, so that is what pay as you go or we call it as on-demand pricing modules. And this is the one of the main reason why companies are moving for cloud. Not only BigQuery, I'm saying overall cloud because a lot of cost saving comes into picture. And then automated data transfer. For example, you have to transfer the data from the existing tech stack. Like for example, you have Teradata and the data is there in Oracle or MySQL. You have to bring the data to your BigQuery and then uh, from other cloud services like Amazon S3. So you have to bring the data. Yes, automated data transfer services is available, but you have to pay for it. And then access control for security. So they, they provide it via IAM called identity and access management. So identity and access management will give you the access for specific user level access so that it will be highly secured. So these are some of the advantages which we need to know. And then, so the next point about integration with cloud platform so other cloud platform means with respect to google cloud platform so other than bigquery you have so many other services in google right so is it possible to connect with other google services yes so stack driver is a, uh, is a is a service where you can do all this monitoring and audit logs thing you can connect cloud data proc the second one it's it's about like uh, uh, fully managed big data as a cluster so this is big data completely you can run spark jobs and everything so you can connect data proc with bigquery you run a spark job to read the data from bigquery or you write the data to bigquery so you can do all these things with data proc and then google uh, cloud data loss prevention api and other machine learning apis like uh, cloud uh, natural language we call it as cnl which is a service available in the google cloud and auto ml and cloud data catalog and cloud pubs up so cloud pubs up is a services like a messaging queue services which actually used to retrieve the data from real uh, real time uh, events so imagine like uh, if you if you are here about kafka rabbit mq so these are like a messaging queue service so cloud pubs up is one of such messaging queue service provided by google to retrieve the real time data and cl cloud pubs up will not process it it just act as a pipeline to retrieve the streaming data so with that i can ingest to my bigquery yes you can connect with cloud pubs up as well so cloud data flow data studio looker and tableau it's a bi tool you can you can connect and cloud ai platform cloud schedulers and functions, cloud data fusion and cloud composer. These are other cloud services to which you can able to connect and process the data. So we have few other important and interesting features I just wanted to share with you. So federated queries. So this is very uh, interesting one. So federated queries allow BigQuery to query data held in Google Cloud Storage, Cloud SQL, which is an RDBMS. So that means you have a BQ here and then so BQ can connect with uh, uh, Cloud SQL, Cloud SQL, it's a RDBMS and BigQuery. And then you can connect with uh, Bigtable, it's a NoSQL database in uh, Google Cloud. And there is something called Spanner, it's a dis distributed database. And even you can connect with the Google Drive, Google Drive with uh, spreadsheets spreadsheet, you can connect. So here, uh, uh, the federated queries advantage is, it's, 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 it supports you like uh, uh, connecting with all these storage services without duplicating the data. That is the important point here to note. That means, for example, you have some data in Cloud SQL. Imagine it's an RDBMS. So you don't want to bring this data to BigQuery and then process. No, that is not required. So BigQuery can directly, you can run a query directly on top of uh, uh, for the data which is presented in Cloud SQL. So data that is there in Cloud SQL, but you can run a query from BQ. That means you are doing a compute here, but the storage is in a different tech stack. 
So here compute and storage is too different. So we will be discussing about this compute and storage of BigQuery in the next video and the architecture video I'll be discussing. So here if you, if for example, you have spreadsheet Excel in Google Drive, you have some data as a CSV file here. So you can run a query from BQ on top of this Google Drive without migrating the data from Google Drive to BigQuery. It's not required. That is called avoiding the duplicating the data. So you are not going to duplicate the data. And that is also one main reason Google BigQuery act as a data lake processing framework because in data lake only a component can able to do the compute only for the data stored in a different storage system. So BigQuery is doing the same. So BigQuery is eligible to be a data lake kind of components. Okay. Fine. And then it also can process other external file formats like ORC, Parquet and any other open source file formats. And the next point is auto backup. So uh, BigQuery uh, supports uh, replication. That is very important thing. Aut uh, automatically the replications is there like you have in HDFS and uh, S3 and all right. So here also your data will be get replicated so that the fault tolerant comes into picture. Even a particular node goes down, your data is not lost. It is still there in a different node. And then uh, any changes that you do in the data in the table, the changes will be get stored for seven days. So the different time uh, version data you can able to see and for seven days it will be there and then programmatic integration this is very important so it gives supports to different programming language apis for example i have to connect through java python yes you can able to do so programming languages supports like java python node.js c sharp go ruby and php is completely supported you can able to use any of these programming languages so one more thing I wanted to show you, an image I want to show you. So we have, you can see this image, right? So the very first column is uh, this column, whatever you see, the services are provided by Google Cloud. It comes under data ingestion. So this is a layer, data layer, right? And the second column you see is data storage services. And these are some of the uh, Google services. And then the third column is data processing and analytics services. And the fourth one is data visualization services. If you see BigQuery comes and supports all these layers, you can see here, here you can see BigQuery data transfer service you can see so BigQuery data transfer service uh, there to transfer the data from the different text stack to BigQuery it supports and then you can see BigQuery in the second column which is for storage BigQuery used for storage as well and it can connect to other storage services also third BigQuery using BigQuery you can do transformation processing data analytics and it can able to connect with other analytics platforms too and then the last one is BigQuery BI engine which supports the visualization stuff and connect with other visualization tools like Luca Tableau or even Google Sheet, Google Catalog, etc. So these are four data, important data layer like ingestion layer, processing layer, storage layer, and then visualization layer. BigQuery supports all these four layers. That is one important thing in BigQuery. Yeah. So we have discussed a, a kind of an introduction, a kick starting with respect to BigQuery. In the next video, I'll be explaining you the BigQuery architecture and then we will be kick starting the practicals and how to, uh, how to uh, integrate and create an account and create the BigQuery services and how to start the practical. We'll be discussing in the next video. So I do a lot of videos. Uh, not only Google Cloud, I do have AWS uh, videos and then I have complete big data course, more than 70 plus videos, Java, Python. It's all available in my channel. Please have a look. And if you really like this video, please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching.